Hi, Bill from Polygon here. In this video, you'll learn how to use the engineered wood generator to create the perfect engineered wood for your scenes. I'll give a brief overview of the different settings and show you how to export the final material for your 3D software. All the settings I'm going to show you will be the same regardless of where you're using it. You can open it in a Substance plugin if you're using 3ds Max, Maya, or any other application that supports the latest Substance plugin. If you're using software that doesn't have a plugin like Blender, you can just use the generator in Substance Player which is where I'm going to be demonstrating it. It's also worth noting that Substance Player is a free download. I'll be sure to include a link to it and the relevant add-ons in the description below. Okay, so the first category of settings we have here are some general settings, most importantly, the resolution of the final textures. Now, by default, this is set to 512, and this is to make the viewport updates nice and fast while you're making alterations. We'll increase this number to 4K when it's time to export, uh, but for now I'll set it to 1024 as that setup runs pretty nicely on my particular hardware setup. There's also a random seed value here, which will basically create a completely different version of the current material based on the settings below. Next we have global parameters, and this is the main category for this generator. We have a variety of different types of wood to choose from, uh, and depending on what one you do choose, there'll be different options generated below. Below that, you'll see a control for selecting what side of the material you want. So you can create textures for the main flat surface as well as the edges of this type of wood um, and then map them separately as needed. Next, we have some controls to adjust the look of the surface. We can adjust the amount of larger wood chips, the general scaling of the wood chips, as well as adjust the variation of that size and the variation of the rotation. There's also a control for the overall rotation below that. If we change over to using plywood, you'll notice these controls change. We can now control the width of the veins in the wood, how warped those veins are, their frequency, i.e. the amount of veins, and we have controls for defining the size of the knots in the wood and how randomly they are distributed across the material. Next, we have some presets for the color as well as variation and contrast controls. Following on from that is the finish category, where we can choose to stain the wood with a variety of different stains. Uh, we can also choose the overall finish, where we can pick between gloss, satin or matte finishes for the final material. We also have a paint option here that allows us to add painted effects to our wood. Uh, once enabled, we can change the color, uh, the, the paint threshold, which is like a almost like a coverage amount, um, and even the paint finish we, we can control separately so you can have like glossy paint on a rougher wood etc next we have some controls for aging uh, where we can add in dirt uh, adjust the scale of that dirt we can add in water damage um, and even bleach the the entire material from sun bleaching following on from that we have some overall adjustments most of which are pretty self-explanatory with the exception of the normal format uh, which i'll cover in the next section now i'm going to go over exporting so you can take your finished material and generate a PBR texture set to use in other applications. If you're using a plugin directly in your application rather than Substance Player, you can ignore this part. Okay, so as I mentioned above, um, we can select the normal format. Now, depending on your render engine and software, you may want to adjust these. I, for example, use Blender, um, and for that you'd want to pick OpenGL. Right, before we open the export window, we need to head right back up to the top of the settings panel and set the resolution to what we want for our exported textures. I'm going to select 4K, then head over and click here on the export as bitmap button. As you can see, this opens up a new window, and from here we can set up our export. By default, all these various texture types are available, but I'm gonna disable a few and just export the base color, roughness, normal, and height textures, as they tend to work great in Blender as is. Next, let's head up to the file type. I tend to go with .tiff files here for the extra color depth. Uh, and then the only thing left to do is set the export folder. Once everything is set up, simply hit export and your textures will be saved. That's it. From there, you can simply load them into your target application and you're good to go.